Okay, we're live. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'll call the meeting to order. My name is Chris Harlow. I'm the vice chairman. Our chairman, Richard Larios, could not be here today. Peter Wall is not here. But we'll go around and introduce yourself to the camera, please. Joe McPowell, I'm on the planning board. I'm the planning board representative on the capital outlay. I'm Bruce Nightingale. I've been on this committee for quite a few years, <laughs> and I'm a representative from the Board of Select. Angelo Lamantia, I'm a representative from the FinCom. Uh, Peter, uh, excuse me, Richard cannot be here today because of a previous commitment, but he expects to be able to be here for other meetings. Um, I'd just like to take a moment to uh, promote something, and that is the work of the Wastewater Support Committee. They've got a meeting coming up on October 3rd that's going to be really important. Of course, this committee has been watching wastewater over the years, and things are really moving forward now for Phase 2, and I would encourage everybody who can be there on the 3rd at the Harwich Cultural Center. I think it's at 6 o'clock meeting. 6 o'clock, Sisson Room. Thank you very much. Uh, we have an agenda, some new business some old business, some discussions, and we'll take a look at the calendar for meetings going forward. Members of the committee have a copy of that, along with a packet of other, other information. Thank you, Charlene and Chris, for putting all this together for us. Charlene, do you have another one of these? Somehow I... This, I one, this is last year's. Uh, you have yeah, we have last year's. Of last year's in your packets. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, what I did is I copied the one that was actually in the town meeting warrant. Okay. So it is in your packet. It should be the very last document. Great. Um, we'll turn the meeting over to Mr. Chris Clark. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I was hoping, as I kind of indicated a little bit earlier before the meeting started, that uh, the request for uh, capital budget requests were due in last Friday. Uh, we did not get a chance to uh, get all those requests in. Why don't you sit next to Angela? Oh, yeah, we are on uh, television. Sorry Thanks. About that. I just forgot my makeup. <laughs> <laughs> and there's your packet, Peter. Thank you. You can make it up. <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Peter Wall. <laughs> You know, I was a little bit nervous because my two appointees as the uh, administrator weren't showing up for the first <laughs> meeting. <laughs> but it's nice to have one. I know Richard was away, so uh, Rick, uh, Richard was away. Um, okay, lost my train of thought. So in, in terms of um, we have the, the requests were due in last Friday. Uh, I did talk to Lincoln, uh, so the facility maintenance and DPW, as well as some of mine, are, are late. I am working on putting those uh, into that same format, so we're, we're keeping the same format that we have used. Uh, so I do have several of them. I probably will have to chase down a, a couple people because I was expecting one of the things that I do look at is if we have an out year and then someone had a request and then they didn't submit it, I'm asking them, well, why didn't you submit a request when you told us before you had an out year? So we, we are a little bit chasing people down to, to make sure we have a, a, a comprehensive list. I thought one thing that would be at least uh, beneficial is uh, last night, and I would certainly, I'm not going to repeat everything I said last night, but just to take a, a couple minutes and kind of go over the, the five-year plan uh, that we have. Uh, this was presented on the selectmen's meeting, uh, so if people want to see the, the full presentation. Uh, but uh, some good news, I think, in this, uh, in terms of uh, a lot of questions that have come up in the time that I've been here. I'm coming up now on, on being your administrator for uh, about five years, so I'm getting a, a fair amount of uh, history in terms of this. And one of the things that we did incorporate and build in is on the uh, debt financing and what the impact of that is. So I just wanted to, I know a couple of you were there last night, so it would be a little bit of a repeat. But in terms of um, in the plan, we do have factored in, so people are aware, uh, the financing, the debt financing for the sewer project, uh, phase two, uh, as has been uh, indicated earlier. We also do have the financing plan, uh, which is still tentative uh, because it needs to go out to market. But for the uh, Cape Cod Technical High School, 
uh, our portion of that debt. Uh, that portion will change and fluctuate uh, based upon enrollment. So if enrollment goes up from Harwich, then that percentage is going to go up a little bit. If our enrollment goes down, then, then it will go down a little bit. Uh, the last couple of years, we've held pretty firm to a, a certain number. Uh, so we haven't had too much movement in that. They have had movement overall, not as many kids going, so we have had the assessment go up uh, because of that. But on Cape Cod uh, Tech, it is very much uh, driven by enrollment. Monomoy, we do have the debt structure already in that. That project was done. Uh, that doesn't have, I believe, as much of an impact with the enrollment adjustments as I remember that. Uh, so we have that, and that is a final uh, amount. So the bo the bonding is done. Uh, the only I hesitate a little bit because there is about I think 250 thousand that's left. They're doing the audit now to close that project out. So there is a, a potential for a minimal borrowing to be done, uh, probably over the next year or two. Uh, but the project and that's mostly uh, just issues with the building, just wrapping it up. Uh, but more so with the state, they hire outside auditors to go through those numbers. Uh, so that project, for all intents and purposes, is wrapped up with a, a very minor exception. The high school? The high school project, yes. Uh, Chris, I just want to add, we're going to have, hopefully, the last meeting of the building committee in early November. In early November. So it's okay. good news. <laughs> it is good news. Yes. Chris, when will that debt be paid off? I think we did a 24-year uh, uh, borrowing, so we're probably three years in. And it is a declining, so you'll see in one of these charts that that actually is helping us as we put new debt on, okay. and some is coming off. So we got a ways to go. We got a ways to go on that. But the rate is good. Uh, maybe just a, a couple of the uh, the highlights. Uh, if you look at the the five year plan, we have the sources of funds. I I think uh, I know uh, uh, Chris had asked for more charts and graphs in in the capital plan, so I think people like that. So we have been trying to incorporate some of that into others. So we have the sources of funds. We are a community that relies very heavily upon uh, real estate and personal property uh, taxes. Local receipts is another one that is uh, the second biggest uh, area. Uh, so when we ask for fees, what we're trying to do is to get fees increased so we can decrease the amount of tax burden that we have for people. So you have seen in the last couple of years a little bit more of a drive for that and certainly this past year uh, we have looked uh, to, to do that. In terms of the uses of funds, we do have specifically for capital purposes uh, the debt service in there. Uh, on the charts that I have for you, it's a, uh, a more of a darker blue. The lighter blue is the operating uh, budget. The darker blue is the debt service. And you can see when you look overall the debt service is a small fraction of the, the overall budget. So we are carefully trying to manage that. In terms of the uh, five-year plan, the projected surplus <coughs> and deficit uh, for FY20 on a $68 million uh, budget, uh, and the current budget is about $66 million. Uh, we have a projection, uh, assuming that our assumptions hold, uh, that we should be able to balance for 20. And at $70 million for FY21, uh, we're about 530,000 uh, off. Uh, some of that assumes uh, health insurance costs at 10%. Uh, I'm cautiously optimistic that we will do uh, much better than that in the next year or two. <clears throat> I don't want to go too far afield of um, hmm. capital, so I'll, I'll keep it to kind of capital. And then really on the, uh, the charts that people probably want to focus in on, the question? What was the, uh, on that, uh, five-year projected surplus deficit yeah the, the five year as I uh, indicated last uh, last night uh, when you take that 10 percent uh, we have the numbers at the bottom so in 2024 it goes as high as as 2.5 million dollars and I, I bet you almost half of that is health insurance so when you take and uh, you have revenue stream <coughs> that's at three or four percent and you have a 10 percent cost factor for health insurance you're going to get that void as you go in the out years. The reality is in this business that as you get closer, uh, you know, the, the health insurance rates, I think this past year, we probably budgeted, I think we estimated in, in future projections for last year, about a 12% to 15% increase in health insurance. And we actually came in, I think we were, came in about six. So this year we did, this current year, we did very well. Uh, and the reason why I suspect we're going to do even better is that there has been a historic, 
is probably the right word to, to use, a historic amount of uh, reduction in medical costs over the last nine months. So yeah, in terms of just the loss ratios, the amount we've been spending have dramatically been less than we ever have seen since in, in Cape Cod Municipal Health Group, which I'm on that board, uh, almost since its origin. So uh, people Any have not. For that or reason? That's a, a great one. No, I mean, no one seems to be able to, <coughs> to piece it together. The only thing that makes some sense to me is that, um, and I've been doing this for a while and paying attention to health insurance for a while, you will get a five-year cycle in health insurance. Well, you'll have five years of, of really bad claims, and then there'll be five years of, of kind of healthier people and, and lesser claims. So it does tend to be a little cyclical, and we are coming off of a five-year, in which has been kind of tough, and we're hopefully this is the beginning of a, a five-year trend where it would be a little bit lighter. But as to why, I mean, I've... I sit on a couple boards and we've asked that question and there's no, no good answer, but certainly the, the overall trend does kind of indicate that we're in a, a cycle of... I sat on that Blue Cross board for a dozen years. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Could I ask you a simple question about the uh, health <coughs> for a second? Does, do our health care obligations refer just to our current employees? No. So it includes em current employees? Plus everybody is getting a pension from retirees as well. That's correct. We're about 50-50. Uh, so about 50% of the uh, total membership in the health insurance is uh, retirees, and then 50% is active. Thank I you. think you may see that trend where there will be more retirees than actives at some point. People live longer uh, when they retire. Okay. On this five-year plan projected surplus deficit, on the bottom there's a little little red things what are those <laughs> that's the that's the shortfall so that's the difference so the the numbers in the in the chart at the bottom are just reflected exactly up I top. see okay. okay all right thank but, you but you know it's not it's not unusual to have the out years do it it's a it's really a product of um, when you make assumptions <coughs> and then what I'd like to do is we'll get into the red and the orange um, <clears throat> And this is what I was trying to, to do last night. I, I think that there's really two slides that we have. Uh, this is you take an average single-family home of $350,000, and then you uh, figure out, okay, what is the amount of tax-supported, basically all these debt, debt exclusions that we vote, what is the impact of that? The vast majority of our debt is debt excluded, so there's very little uh, in within Prop 2.5 debt. This is all above. So you can see in 19, we have already committed and in, in, in there uh, that it is uh, just over $300. So if you have a, a $3,000 tax bill, and then 300 of that is related to the debt service, specifically related to debt exclusions. So you can see uh, what portion of that would be. The, red, the little red bar to the right of these are anticipated uh, based upon uh, projects that are in the pipeline. So you can see that that red number starts to go high. The, the orange number is coming down because we have projects that are falling off. <coughs> Monomoy is, is, a, is a good one that will be falling off. Cape Tech will also be falling off once that comes on. And it will be quickly backfilled by the, the debt on the, uh, the sewer project. You, you can't hide $240 million of, of debt. So the increase over the years out, out is, is the sewer? Yes. That's the vast majority of it is the sewer. We have factored in, as I've indicated, Monomoy. We factored in Cape Tech. We factored in anything that we could think of that was a big project. So this is everything all in. But I know I think there was a FinCom meeting that I missed, and, and it's, a fair, it's a fair commentary. Well, what happens in 15 years if you need to change out the police station or fire station and you have $15 million? You don't have that factored in. And no, we don't. So... You know, I think, in, at least in, in, my, um, in, in my business here, thinking about it, we have a new, a new Monomoy uh, High School that has a projected lifespan of 40 years, at least. Uh, you'll have Cape Tech with a projected lifespan of 40 years. The police station is probably 15 years old, but generally the building like that will have a 40-year lifespan. So uh, the harbors, I mean, we have spent a lot. There's been a lot, of, uh, a lot of work done on the harbors. 
but you know that work and, and we're spending the money now with the idea that it will last for 40 years so the idea is we kind of have a, a blip where we, we just put an addition onto the house if you would and we got to pay for that addition but we shouldn't have to do anything else for a while of any great magnitude so um, you know unless something comes up from a regulatory change or anything of that nature we should be able to focus primarily on sewers and the Go. East Harwich fire is in here something East Harwich fire is in there yep so I guess I what I hear you saying is if we didn't have to pay for sewerage <laughs> we would be in absolutely fantastic shape. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I say that, yes, from a, from a finance perspective from the town. Yeah. But I have done a few of these sewer meetings in which you go out and you meet with people, and people say, well, you know, wouldn't it be convenient? You know, it would be convenient for the town to say, homeowner, do it on your own. Homeowner has to do it on their own. They're going to spend probably three times the amount. So for people that really do believe that, um, you know, it, obviously we have to clean up the environment. We, we have Conservation Law Foundation. They don't have a sense of humor. They've already picked two of our organizations, you know, town <coughs> businesses so, to go after. Uh, yeah. And, you know, they don't have a sense of humor. They want this done quicker. Uh, so if their idea was to go, then people would have to have improved systems on their own that the trouble with these innovative technology systems is you have to be there and you have to monitor it all the time because people don't realize that these systems are biological systems so they rely upon bugs doing what they need to do and also relies upon stirring up the material to, to create um, air, aerosolize if you would some of that to, to get the uh, nitrogen out and all that is very expensive and the proven technology to do it isn't there so here you're going to spend money and you still may not solve the problem so it is a it is a burden on on the taxpayers in in the town uh, but i think it's a, a burden better shared by us coordinating it and utilizing these plans than than private residents to go so it's pay pay us now or pay someone else a lot more later is probably the simple message. I did announce too last night. I think I announced here when I sold my house in uh, Sturbridge. So I will be a resident of uh, Harwich pretty soon. All things. Well, uh, you can get to pay things, too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can be paying too. Yeah. So I have, a, uh, I have a, a vested interest, if you would. To Chris, can I just ask a couple of mechanical problems? Absolutely. Issues. Uh, are we? Are we? Uh, Paying or bonding for extended periods of time or short periods of time? Uh, generally, most of these are, uh, well, the, the school debts are 24 and 25 years. Uh, the sewer debt will be 30 years. But if I look at this, you know, we haven't gotten into the sewers yet, <laughs> and we're pretty high. And I, I was wondering if we were loading it up front as you said before uh, that's how it bags off so if we have right. uneven borrowing right and we borrow for shorter than the life of whatever it is we're impacting negatively in ourselves now um and, and the value of you, money now is much more than it is later yeah yes and no i, I know we've had several discussions on this we have several discussions on this topic well, i think it's something we have to look at because if you were to just stand here and mechanically and i make up these numbers yep. if if you have uh, a 10-year borrow going down from 60 percent to 20 and then if you did it evenly what's the difference can right. we see the charts that show the difference because if we can get this down we're in much better shape, I think. Yeah, I, I think a, a couple things in terms of that, and maybe just for people that are looking at this chart, more so for, for folks at home, if you take 2019, you can see that the existing is about, uh, looks about 310, and then you add about $10 on for proposed, and then in, let's just pick a, uh, another year here, we'll go 2022, and you can see the existing debt goes from the 310 down to 250 but now we're adding 200 on so when we did some of that modeling for the sewer i think we showed that over the 70 year time span or $350,000 home it would be about 400 400 dollars a year uh, that ranges to a high of 650 and then down to about 150 so it, it does range i think a couple things to, to angelo's point 
Uh, we could look at doing level debt. Some of the sewer is going to be level debt because it will be done through the SRF funding. Uh, the good news on the SRF funding is if we were to go to private markets, we would be at 3.5 to 4% for 30 years. Uh, by SRF, we're at 2%. Uh, we are number one on the list uh, for SRF for the project in East Harwich. Uh, it's a joint town project, so even though we have two separate applications, Chatham has theirs and we have ours, uh, the state views it as one project. Uh, so because it's a combined uh, two towns and it's nitrogen removal, so we are in excellent, st excellent place to potentially have that be zero. So the modeling that we've done is 2%. It could be zero. So the numbers you see will hopefully get better. Uh, on Cape Tech, we assumed 4% uh, for the debt financing on that, and that may be 35 So we're trying to present kind of almost a worst-case scenario to show people what, what it will be. And if we have a few things that kind of break our way, uh, we will have uh, some positives. But I think operationally, um, trying to take some of the items off um, of, the, of the schedule and trying to mitigate some of those costs <coughs> is going to have a, a longer term impact and benefit to the town. Uh, DHY, the, the cooperative effort between the three towns, I mean, that has a, a potential to save us 19% uh, on the, the facility costs. And 19% of facility costs on the construction plus on the operation uh, budget on a year to year basis is a fairly significant amount of money. And is that has not fighting? been factored in. Sorry. Is Yarmouth fighting us on that? No. I no. thought that's what the press was saying. That yeah, I, I think that it's, um, it, 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 it's been a, a good effort, uh, the three towns. I would say uh, kind of somebody said this jokingly at, um, at I think that one Cape Summit, that there's a reason why H is in the middle. <laughs> and, you know, to, to be a little cute with that, um, you know, Dennis and Yarmouth have an experience with their schools. <laughs> right. And I don't think that's any secret that they've had disagreements about and how they fund the schools. And I think by having Harwich, you know, involved in that and, and trying to construct it, it, it definitely makes sense. It is kind of interesting because if we do build the plant, the concept is to build a plant in Dennis, and we will only be about 15%. So we will be the, the smallest player in that. So why make use of, of us? You know, quite honestly, uh, I know several people viewed the uh, Chatham facility. And when I talk about bugs, you know, bugs are important to, to this. And you need to have flow to have the bugs. Right. And what do we have on Cape Cod? You know, after Columbus Day, <laughs> you, we lose about half of our population, well, more than half in our case, of the population. So by having a small plant on our own with minimal flow <coughs> is going to be problematic. I mean, that's what Chatham has seen, that they've had problems kind of maintaining their bugs and being able to efficiently remove the material because they're so small. So by grouping up, Dennis is, is actually not too much bigger than we are, uh, but we need Yarmouth for the volume. Dennis is kind of benefits because they have geography on their side. They're in the middle of the two towns, and we can plug in. So, you know, I think it, it's a good deal, really, for the three communities, and hopefully we can continue to kind of show people that it is going to be a good deal in all three towns and, and work through some of the issues of creating a, I don't want to call it a shotgun wedding, but, you know, to have a partnership that works for all three. Now, the, the beginning piece will go into the Chatham. Right. Yes, all the phase two will go into Chatham. We've already paid Chatham almost $3 million. And in five years, we have another $2 million payment coming up. So uh, to, it's to our advantage to, to get the flow in there uh, sooner than later. It's been a couple of years since I went over and, and looked at that whole thing, but it was way, oh, yeah. it was nowhere near yeah. even That's half right. yeah. of the big tank that that stuff was flowing around in. I think in the winter time it goes down to about a hundred thousand gallons a day and it's designed for a million. Wow. So capacity wise it makes a difference. Sorry. First, um, <clears throat> what do you think the timing would be on this Dennis Howard Yarmouth? If, if we go forward when are we looking at building? 
building something? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, and, and that's a question that's going to be a little bit of a, a challenge for Harwich. Uh, and the only reason why I say that is phase three is in East Harwich. So we are looking at really over the next five to ten years at doing East Harwich. Right. These other towns probably want to build a facility and get it ready to go uh, before we get to our <coughs> phase four. Phase four is the um, really around uh, right now around the landfill, our landfill. So we need to reorient our thinking and our plan to start doing West Harwich first because that's where the closest pipes are going to be to where we would plug in. We plug in at Route 28 just as a, a, a place for people to, to know. So we plug in at 28 and on these systems you don't build a system way over here you know it, it's a pipe so you have to kind of build concentrically out from where you have the plant. So we do need to look at our schedule and reorient our schedule to start taking flow from instead of Harwich Center and building out to take it from North Harwich and West Harwich first and then go there. What that will do is that is going to alter some of the, the financing piece, right. uh, but uh, we haven't got that far yet. Uh, they are in the process. CDM is in the process using grant money, not using town funds, but using grant money to start to look at that and see how we would resequence. What's your best guess on eight years, ten years? I think the you know I think if things go uh, kind of according to plan, I mean they could have that plant up and operational within five. So we could be paying for a plant for the capital cost to construct, and then it it may take us a little bit to start plugging in and connecting up some of the homes in that area. That's that's interesting. Five years, yeah. That's optimistic, but I I think with regulatories and, and just construction seasons, it, it will take a little bit. The last time I lived in, we had a representative town meeting, mm -hmm. and uh, we were going through sewers in Brentford. And uh, so the moderator, after a couple of years, he put, it was a $500,000, which compared to what we're looking at, <laughs> but it was like $500,000 a year. So he always put that number one, we had representative town yeah. meetings, they say, and, and yeah. he'd put that number one, he said, okay, nobody's happy about it, I know you're all unhappy. But we got to do this. Let's get it out of the way. Favor I oppose no, and then we moved on with the rest of the town meeting. You know, I think one of the interesting pieces in my mind. You know, I do try to think 40 years out. I mean, I try to look. You know, in, in advance. And phase eight of our program really is a, a maybe. We may not have to do it. And, you know, to me, if, if we're able to be effective and get these first phases done, we could really avoid costs for the next generation by having it. And the one thing that, that really scares, scared me when I first started is, you know, there's very little in actually um, understanding and monitoring, you know, what, how effective are some of these things. We've done Muddy Creek, which is tidal flushing. And we do have monitoring money in that so we can assess the value and the impact of that. Cold Brook, we're looking at that to see how effective that will be. But the more effective we can have those, and we don't have to pay to put pipes in the ground, you know, conceivably, you could be looking at $20 million worth of work that may not have to be done if we get the desired results now. I was a little concerned about, you know, the monitoring wasn't being taken seriously. And I'm like, you got to monitor the results because why would you duplicate a failure? So they, they are doing more monitoring and the state seems to be more plugged into monitoring to assess the results of that, so, which I think to me is just common sense. So, so my question would be, if we're talking five years, do we need to start talking about a number in the capital plan? Um, which, which we were, we're out seven years. Yes. So are we talking about putting a, putting a placeholder in the capital plan? We do have wastewater in there, and wastewater would stay. But we are going to have to look at altering that. And, and as CDM develops those numbers and helps us to understand how that resequencing would work, then we will adjust. I don't have the numbers now to make those adjustments, but we will. It's a good, it's a fair comment. 
So just so, so people get a sense, you can you can kind of see when you add up these uh, these costs that the um, I think all these charts you know keep us under that 650 as I was indicating in terms of the the high end, uh, and then I think that's really I think for capital planning purposes, you know you really want to look at the debt structure because it goes hand in hand, and and trying to sequence debt in as you try to capture what's coming off obviously if if you had a um, better planning you know we could figure out the useful life of these things and not have them all do at once and unfortunately I mean, just a lot of this is all due at once which makes it harder to to have that mitigation of the uh, the debt but just uh, obviously that that's available if there's additional questions or concerns in regards to that you know, still I still would like to see it evenly. Yeah. I do think, Angela, What did you say, Angela? I'm sorry. I, we've had this discussion 912 times. Um, the, the dollars in, in the debt service here are based on a shorter term than is, in my view, necessary of borrowing. And by stacking the first years with a higher amount of payback, than the rest. So now you have high going down and you have here it, it going up rather than having it flat across. And my concern is if we did it the other way, or my hope would be that each year we would actually be paying less because we'd have more years. I don't know anybody that ever goes buys a house. <laughs> yeah, you just buy, when you buy your house, instead <laughs> of paying by getting it for 20 years, get it for 10 and pay it off in five and see how that works because that's what we're doing here. Yeah, I, I, I don't not, think... Not quite. Yeah, right. not quite. I, that's not necessarily a fair characterization. Uh, we have the ability to go out 30 years in most of these borrowings, okay. and we are going out 30 years on most of these borrowings. So I think what we've had a discussion in the past is that uh, there is what they call level debt service, so you can get your debt and have a consistent amount of money. So if you borrow it over 30 years, uh, if you do level debt, then you have that same amount. So in the first year, it's, it's less, but you keep that same amount. By doing declining debt service, which is traditional how it's done, that number falls off. And quite honestly, the, the difference of opinion that I have with Angelo on this, and I will continue to have a difference of opinion on him, really is two things. One, I had a boss that taught me, if you don't have to spend money, then don't. So doing the level debt service is more costly because you're, you're assessing the risk out to farther years, so it is a more costly way to borrow. The second is once you do your level debt service, then any issue you have, any issue you have, if you have that new fire station that you need in seven to ten years from now, that's piling on. You get no value in having declining debt when you have that. And I know enough, I mean, I've been in this business for a while. You know, you're going to have something will come up. And do you want to pile on or do you want to capture some of that declining debt? And to me, it, it just has greater fiscal, uh, fiscal stability and, and fiscal uh, capabilities by having it be declined so you get it. And it is, in the long run, it's cheaper. And when I say cheaper, I mean, we're talking about, we, we ran a few models, I think, on the, on the harbor, uh, which were six or seven million dollars. I mean, you're talking three or 300 to 400,000 on borrowings of that magnitude. And you start translating that into 200 and. 240 million dollars you know it becomes it becomes somewhat with that being said I do think SRF has their own system of how they do it so we are going to have something it's going to be level anyway the other point and then I won't bring this up again is that <laughs> 20 years from now the dollar that you have in your hand mm -hmm. that what you could buy for a dollar you're probably going to buy something for 10 cents because that's what happens with our money so if we can spend pay it back in 20 years from now, the value of the payback is a lot less than now. Because the, the net present value of money is much higher than it is in the future. Yeah, I don't disagree that it, it impacts more negatively the way we do it on our current residents. Because if this was the 1980s and you could get a return on your money putting in your savings bank <laughs> at 7%, <laughs> 
you know, that's one thing, but we've had a period of time, 20 years, where it's still sub one for, you know, a passbook account. But if the circumstance change, I agree with you. <laughs> but in terms of, um, in terms of the overview, I just wanted to, it, it, for upcoming attractions, probably the two things related <coughs> to capital that I do want to let people know. Uh, and I said this last night at the uh, selectmen's meeting, and so far I, I haven't haven't seen anything to dissuade me from this. Uh, but we're looking at probably two debt exclusions. Is what I'm going to try to target: uh, one debt exclusion for the traditional roadway work that we do, that 700,000 each year. Uh, the nice thing about that is because we do a consistent amount each year that and we only borrow that for five years so as that falls off we replace it with a similar amount so the amount of tax obligation really doesn't move so that seven hundred thousand is just a continuation of of a program that has been in effect for quite a while and then as i alluded to uh, before the meeting and before the cameras came on uh, lower county road is something that was intentionally deferred last year because we knew we had sewers and uh, the, the fire station so that was deferred but the the need is still there and as we cut in the uh, water lines and, and make that into more of a that road into more swiss cheese doing the the water work <coughs> uh, it would be good to to get in and kind of finish everything that needs to be done on it and be done uh, but uh, obviously 5.5 million dollars would have to have a, a debt exclusion and i do believe we have those numbers factored into these into these charts Chris, so with respect for that to, i'm sorry with respect to that uh, and i don't want to get into a lot of detail but as part of the lower county road redo mm -hmm. they're going to do sidewalks yes yes yeah, the sidewalks will all be um ada uh, related okay. and then they will put some I, additional I crosswalks too. in and just as a plug for people you know we get a lot of requests for crosswalks I want the convenience of having a crosswalk in front of my house well you know you don't put a crosswalk in on a curve because you're gonna get somebody killed so you, know, you put a crosswalk in where if a car is going 40 miles an hour you need 400 feet you know there are there are maps and or formulas that go in how do you put a crosswalk in an area that's safe so we do get a lot of requests from people that put crosswalks in and you got to put them in areas where we're not going to kill people and i made a promise to myself when i get into this business i wouldn't do anything that would intentionally harm folks so um you know i, I wouldn't put in crosswalks in areas uh, but just as a plug for well for I, I belong to the animal hobby yacht club and you take your as, as does angelo you take your hit life in your hands when when you park in that parking lot <laughs> across the street there and, and come and, and, and there's a crosswalk yeah. but people coming from Howitch Port Center yes are just as a little bit of a curve there so yes. that, and they're they're of course going in excess of the speed limit yep and uh, I've seen some very as I'm sure you probably have Angelo uh, I've seen some very scary things there. well I think uh, Lower County Road is a very difficult road but and that's one problem the other problem that i think is worse than that is bicycle riders because what you'll have is one on each side of the road yes and if you have two cars that are coming at each other you can't fit the two cars and two bicycle riders without hitting so the residents all know when they see that situation mm -hmm. one of you'll stop and you'll let the bike go or you let the car go but during the summer People don't realize that we'd be foolish well, enough not here right to allow, here. you know. Yeah. So I don't know what you can do about that. And it's really, it's really, just take a couple of bikes and put two cars next to them and see see what it looks like. It's. Now, I have a horrible. pet peeve where when I got my driver's license, I remember that one of the t questions was, if you have an obstruction in the road, you're supposed to stop and allow the other person to go. When it's safe, <coughs> go around. And now I think that people just play the game of chicken and they don't stop if you have an instruction on your side. They just try to go around and it's just, it's really a fend for yourself it's kind scary. of. It it's is scary. scary. So, Bruce? The, the Lowell County project. Yes. That's a two year, if I remember correctly, that's a two year construction project. Yes. Um, the way Lincoln, actually, I was just out there the other day, as a matter of fact, they, they call it a three construction season project. Okay. Because on Cape Cod, you really can't do road construction in the middle of the winter, and you can't do it in the middle of summer. Right. So 
change. We really have a, a spring construction and a fall construction season. So I think it's a fall and a spring and a fall. Okay. Uh, but it does equate to two years. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Next. Oh, actually, yeah, yeah. The one other thing is, uh, on a good news front, uh, we did get the free cash certification, and you'll see if uh, you, you notice the charts from last year. I had a little block on free cash and how free cash was allocated uh, in the, uh, the the bigger print that you have, and we came in about just shy of 3.5. Last year was 3.5, so that probably, for capital budgeting purposes, gives us about 1.4 million dollars. Uh, in free cash to allocate, uh, which is a pretty healthy number, yep. uh, quite honestly. It's a, a healthy number from the time I've been here. Uh, obviously, we can't spend the full 3.5. We do have other obligations. Winter, uh, I have historically, in the time I've been here, budgeted about 500000 for winter, and then we'll put another 500000 into uh, OPEB, uh, other post-employment benefits, uh, to fund that obligation, as well as and, uh, stabilization account, uh, to continue to build that so if the economy does have a downturn we want to be able to sustain two or three years of kind of making it through that uh, so building reserves in time <coughs> when you can uh, does make a tremendous amount of sense but all those numbers add up to about just over three million dollars <coughs> after your uh, presentation last night I was thinking about uh, how does this whole thing affect younger people and I was concerned about your numbers for a tax increase mm -hmm. over the next, say, five years. Yes. 4%, 6%, 4%, 4%. <laughs> so if, if our employees are getting a raise of, let's say, 2.2, 2, mm -hmm. are we going to ask the question of can our own employees live in the town they work in that's you know that that's a great question and you know the answer to that is probably not something people want to hear but you know i worked in the town of wellesley and you know there, there's two parts to the taxation question in a community and one part is how much does government spend the yeah. other part is what are the value of housing and the value of housing is really what is outstripping people's ability to live in the community. And the value of housing, I mean, I've now been down here for a little bit, and I, I just find this stuff very fascinating. And, you know, the, the real issue here is the Cape isn't, it, it's not Cape Codders competing against Cape Codders for houses. If that was the case, the housing market would be significantly more affordable for people. Just as a for instance, and I, I think I looked this up fairly recently, there's 351 cities and towns for equalized valuation, property value divided by the number of people, Harwich is 25th in the state. So we have very, very high property prices. When you look at income, what is the income? So again, out of 351, we have income factors that are in, I think it's about 225. So we're in the bottom third for income, which makes sense, a lot of retirees and a lot of people that, that uh, work. And then you have the value of the housing. What creates that differential? And here's my, here's my assessment, if you would, is if you had the, the 225 competing for properties based upon 225, then your, your value should be about 225. <coughs> you don't have that. What do we have? We have seasonal housing. So now a Cape Codder, a, a native Cape Codder, is competing against, uh, I'll use New Jersey, New York, and other folks that are coming in. I only pick on New Jersey because Angelo, I know from <laughs> New Jersey. But you have people coming in, and the Cape Codder is now competing against folks that have disposable income to have a second home and I think that that trend you see that much more you know it's funny just buying a house in the community and looking you know south of 28 <clears throat> almost everything was a million dollars and then when you look more into the middle of the community is where you get you know us closer to where you're seeing a little bit of that average but it's still pretty high 
but I, I think, that, and that's an issue that uh, part of the reason why I think I advocated certainly for, and I know the selectmen have been very, even when Angela was on, very passionate about how do you do affordable housing. And you have to do that equalizer. And the equalizer is the town has to contribute money towards buying these homes to take away that exterior factor. And do we want to lose the factor of people coming to Cape Cod because this is a desirable place? No. <laughs> but how do, you, how do you account for that? And I think you account for that with housing trusts and, and things of that nature to try to offset some of that marketplace. And quite honestly, I mean, I, you know, you're not going to build affordable housing on the waterfront. Aren't you I mean, right now in the process of reorganizing that whole housing yes, question? Yes. Yeah, and, and uh, I guess unfortunately or, or fortunately, the, the good news is we've we formed it and it's on file, so we have it ready to go. Uh, and I'll put in a plug here. Uh, there are five people that are on the board. Uh, myself as the administrator, uh, I'm on. A member of the Board of Selectmen, uh, in this case, Don Howell is the member of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, Larry Brophy, the, the retired chair from the uh, planning board, was selected. All three of us have something in common. We're all white males. And uh, the board is trying to diversify and, and find other people to put on there. Well, my son can't go on there because he falls in the same category. <laughs> he didn't put his paperwork in yet. <laughs> but, you know, and not. He's very interested in the, in, in the issue. Yeah. Uh, you make an excellent point with uh, the two groups of houses and the taxes, and that's been going on forever. Right. And that's one of the reasons uh, the town has, in, in the past, put everything they could find into the taxes rather than another way of getting money, because that, that group was paying <laughs> 60, 70 percent of the taxes. Right. The problem we have now, and the reason I keep on bringing up keeping it level in front, is because all of a sudden the houses that are on the northern side of 28 have been assessed for good value, mm -hmm. right value, but it's way up. <coughs> and people are having a hard time paying taxes because the house that they bought for thirty thousand uh, dollars is now worth three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So that's why I think we have to be very careful and do whatever we can do to keep it down. Uh, and but it, it, it's tough. It's, it's really very tough. But I'll just, and again, I, I, I won't uh, go on too far, but, you know, it's funny. I had a discussion with my wife. We, ch we chose to come to Harwich. We had an opportunity to buy a house in Yarmouth, and the taxes were significantly higher. And in my last community, you know, I had a, a situation in which I was the administrator. I lived in one town, Sturbridge, and I was the administrator in Southbridge. And I was uh, told by my engineering people, well, we need to upgrade our sewer treatment plant, and it's going to be $7 million. <laughs> and I said, well, tell me why. And it wasn't $7 million. It probably was $700,000. And in Sturbridge, they were told, same companies, ironically, that, that ran <coughs> both facilities, they were told, no, you need these plants. So the year that I was there, I raised water and sewer rates because I was responsible for water and sewer rates by 2%. In my own hometown, I'm not supposed to, by ethical law, ethical code, I'm not supposed to criticize my own administrator in my own town. They bought in to doing these renovations. My water bill went up by 75%, 75%, and my sewer bill went up by, I think, 85%. And took everything I could to control myself not to go down there and say, what are you doing? So to me, it's more about, you know, hiring a professional that understands the business, that when you get people that come to you that, and, and they're not disingenuous people, but when they tell you, well, you have a, t you know, a 7 or $8 million solution, and I push back a lot, well, what is the solution? And when you find out it wasn't seven or eight million dollars, it was only seven hundred thousand dollars. That's how you keep your your rates low by actively managing. So I, I'm going to put that to the test by Enjoy. being here, and hopefully I'll be here for a, a while to to show that. But I think we went pretty far afield, and I apologize. <laughs> oh, we, did. we did, but it's interesting. I, I think in terms of, um, <clears throat> I know you're letting me. Uh, 
I've been here for a while, so I, I have much more thoughts in terms of how to do things. In terms of uh, the review of the schedule, I, I did, did want to. Did you want to run through the projects first? I don't have the uh, projects done. Will you do that? I didn't get that done. Okay. I will bring that at the October 2nd meeting. I have about halfway through, so I, I will bring the projects. The well, other thing. We're just talking about that, Chris. We'll, we'll use the same process we did in the past. Department heads will come in and explain what they want and why they want it and so forth. Absolutely. Okay. If you, as long as you guys are comfortable. I mean, I'm always open am, to, just... to change, but uh, I think in terms of that. Bruce, what do you think? One of the things that I would like to see as we go forward, we occasionally get criticism about items that jump into the plan all of a sudden and they weren't in the plan before. Is there any way that we can identify projects that jump into the plan that weren't in the plan? Can we put a can we put a, a color around it or something yeah. so that because we get criticized that we're not following the plan, and I don't think that's really true. But I would like to be able to identify projects that all of a sudden appear for the first time. Yeah, you know, I, I've had this discussion. Uh, to answer your question, yes, I, I certainly can highlight those ones that are coming on the plan. But, you know, again, I've been doing this for a, a while. To have the assumption that a capital plan is that you know for certain that seven years out something's going to come up and that you put it in seven years and you let it migrate down for seven years. You know, I, I jokingly say, I mean, the five-year plans, you know, the Soviet Union used the five-year plans for a long time, and what did it get them? You know, they went bankrupt. So, you know, having a, a theory that everything needs to be aged five to seven years doesn't make any sense. I understand that. I think the criticism is, and, and this is where, you know, if we can figure it out, to me, and, and when I brought that up to, to somebody and I said, you know, how did your capital plan work? If, if everything aged five to seven years, why did John Rendon and I inherit 30 years <laughs> worth of neglect at the harbors? And the answer was, well, the person was afraid to come forward and ask for it. And I'm like, well, how do you design a system that fails itself? But I do think that, you know, a capital plan should be based upon what are the needs of today. A critical need should be addressed in short order. A planned need that you know, I mean, a great example is a roof. I mean, if you put a roof on a house or a structure or a building, it should last 15 to 20 years. So you should get some life out of that. So you should be able to plan for that. But, you know, some of these things that come up, rule, you know, regulation changes and things of that nature. But I, I, this is a great suggestion, so I, I will try to yeah. color coat I mean, these ones got, that are new to the We've got process. ambles in the plan stretched out, and we've got things stretched yeah. out. We had the fire station in East Orwich. We had that stretched out. I just, I think we get criticized when we really don't have to be criticized. I agree. Because I don't think... It, we put some thought into this, and I'd like to show that not everything is immediate the way it's told. Yeah, and one of the reasons why we don't have all the applications in is I have called a few department heads, and I said, look, you, you had, actually I talked to two of them today, you had in your plan last year uh, 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 something, and it wasn't on this year. Why wasn't it on? Right. If you ask for two years out, you still need it. Mm. And the answer was, yeah, I still need it. Well, submit the paperwork. <laughs> so, you know, some of it is trying to, to make sure people understand that right. this is a planning tool. And as much as you're able to plan, plan it out and think it out. And the more we can kind of stretch out and, and sequence things, then the more we can avoid the, the tax burdens going up and down right. Pekin Valley. Less surprises. So, but we will, uh, we will, I will do that. I, I'm happy to color code or highlight. Maybe I'll put them in uh, bolded or something where okay. you know the ones that added on that. Right. The, over the years, and God, it seems like I've been on this board forever, but uh, <laughs> all the years I've been on here, over the years, our favorite friends down at the Water Department are the folks who invariably, you know, come back with something <laughs> just what you're talking about. When 
you know, and of course, their answer always is, "Well, we we pay for it." In other words, mm -hmm. uh, you know, but I I I don't think they understand what you're saying right. is that. You know, we like to think we're on this board to try to plan the way that it's going to go, and uh, they make it difficult sometimes. Well, just to put a plug in, you know, I think Dan Pelletier, the new water superintendent, has been very much on top of that. Yes. And yes. previous, you know, I, I was around long enough to see where I, I've heard that criticism before. And you the, ran the previous the for a while, didn't you? <laughs> That's right. I did actually for a year. That was a solid year that we were done. But the, the I, I, do, I do think actually the gentleman now passed away, but um, that was down there previously. But I could see where things would all of a sudden just come out of nowhere, and you know, from a planning perspective, from a management perspective, that's not not good. You want to try to get out in front of this as much as when, you can. When, when that's your, I mean, I could see other departments mm -hmm. where. You, you, you don't know, but it seems to me that that department is mm. something that they ought to be able to plan this stuff out right. in the future, you know? Absolutely. So in, in terms of, um, I will definitely uh, add on the, the new ones. I do have a, a draft memo that I plan on sending out uh, to department heads. If this works for you, and I'm sure there will be some jockeying for changes, but Water Department, actually, they have a 30-year capital plan that they would like to, to share with, with you guys. So um, they wanted to go early. Uh, so I haven't confirmed any of these with my department heads, but I was looking at on page uh, two right after the uh, agenda is really a draft schedule. And if this kind of works for you, the October 2nd uh, here at 4 o'clock, we'd have water, fire, police, recreation. October 16th would be uh, library, conservation, harbor, cemetery, and planning. And then October 23rd would be building maintenance, DPW, golf maintenance, wastewater, and administration. And then the idea would be to work our way through that and by October 30th have an uh, opportunity to take some preliminary votes. It's a little bit ahead of last year's schedule, but not not too much, probably a week or two off of uh, last year's schedule. But if that's something that, that makes sense to uh, to folks, I can distribute that around. And invariably, I'll have one department head say, oh, I'm going away, or I have something on that day. But uh, usually, the schedule will kind of hold. Looks good. If that looks OK, we'll yeah. distribute that around tomorrow. Chris, um, will we have access to their proposals Absolutely. before each meeting? Thank you. Uh, did it work last year that um, I try to save paper? Pile. Yeah. Well, I think last year, I think Sandy scanned everything and then sent it to you electronically. Do you want me to do <coughs> paper? You know, I, I hesitate a little bit because sometimes people will do the one page and then they'll have a, a book for backup. So obviously I can give you the summary and if the backup is, is manageable. But sometimes you'll see me come in. I have a binder. I mean, I keep everything. I mean, it's, it's a lot of material. Personally, so. I, I like that. Like uh, one department wanted a front-end loader, and they gave a whole description from the company that made the loader, all their accessories. I don't need that. Okay. If that's in the, a binder. Yep. But I've got to have a one-page summary of it in the uh, department. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 One-page printed summary would be good. So I, maybe what I'll do is I'll, I'll do the forms that everyone's familiar with, and if the backup is reasonable, three or four pages, I'll include that. If it's more lengthy, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know how many people look at specs for trucks. I mean, <laughs> I don't. I mean, I, 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 other than for procurement purposes, you know, I, I really don't try to look it at that stuff. Right. Right. Exactly. But, you know, ambulances, I mean, some of these things can just really be uh, oh. pretty voluminous. When I started on this committee, Chris, ambulances were eighty-five thousand dollars. Oh, jeez! And they're now what? Three hundred, aren't they? Three fifty. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Imagine that. It really is. It's still a. Although I have to say, I was very happy we had one when I had one occasion to ride. <laughs> <laughs> so what I will do is I uh, will put together and email out the material, so you'll have that. I'll bring the hard copies of the summary with me, 
So I will target to have all the material by August six, uh, October 16th, and really I'll focus on uh, water, fire, police. You said 16th. Yeah. I said it for a reason. So by October 2nd, I'll make sure I get uh, water, fire, police, and recreation. I think I have all those in. And then uh, DPW, I'm not going to get theirs, or I probably won't have mine finished until the end of the week. So those probably won't be ready for October 2nd. So I'll have those for the... Bring them with you. Just yeah, I'll, yeah, I mean, bring them. Want with them all at once, or do you just want those items that are coming up? Just those that are coming up. Yeah. Okay. That's what I was kind of thinking. Going. Yeah. So we'll we'll focus on October second. I'll get those to you, and then we'll we'll have them before. I hope to have everything done by October sixteenth. Actually, that was one of the other comments I was going to make. Is um, we we had a little bit of an issue in which um, the CPC had an October 1st deadline for people to submit. Uh, they changed a little bit their process and they wanted to have all the boards and committees that were going to be supportive of it also sign off on the forms. So uh, the selectmen, I did bring this up to the selectmen, actually I think Charlene had originally flagged this to my attention, that uh, the orientation for doing it was September 20th and then you're supposed to have all this work done by October 1st. So we did uh, advocate, and uh, I think Don Howell, uh, Selectman Howell, went to the meeting, uh, and uh, he was there. He, uh, Dave Nixon, the chairman, came in last night to the selectmen's meeting. He's now moved that back to October 15th. So I won't have some of these in my hands until October 15th if they are going to be funded through, um, through CPC. And then the boards and committees, all their uh, support letters and, and sign-offs can have to be done by December 1st. So they have fairly they have, dramatically they changed. They haven't voted yet? CPC? CPC, no. They won't vote until December. They'll, they'll have a similar time span to you guys. Uh, Chris? Chris, I have a question. Yeah, Peter. Um, <clears throat> I don't like to miss meetings. Unfortunately, I have a cruise scheduled. <clears throat> and I'm going to miss... October 23rd and the 30th, I would like, if it's possible, to push back the October 30th one so I can be here for the votes. Mm. If you can't, you, you can't. go forward or back? Back, in November sometime. The only thing, uh, and we, that's doable, uh, when we were looking at the calendar, when you get into uh, November, uh, November 6th, I think, is the, the next day, which is Election Day. Yeah. But if you wanted to meet on a Wednesday, you know, that way we don't generally have meetings. Um, Thursday? Thursday? So we can move that last one till... The first or the 8th? Actually, geez, November 8th. Oh, no, the, it's my birthday. What? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time I've been when at a that? meeting for my birthday. <clears throat> <laughs> we can do... November 1st or 8th, you said November 1st. November 1st works? Yeah. Oh, you'll be here for November 1st? Yes. November 1st? I'm getting home the night of the 30th. Yeah, what kind of first of November? To... Fine. It's a, sure. uh, okay, November 1st on that one. I know that far ahead, I'm fine. You will change it? Yep. Okay, great. Thank you. So we'll say Thursday, November 1st. October 30th is November 1st. Can't yes. both be Thursdays. So we take off the 30th, right? Yeah. I take off out. the 30th. I will take that off. Yep. Okay. okay. What was the other day? And you just book the room. Yeah, that's why I think it's yeah. good to just lay these out ahead of time so we can all plan accordingly. I think I have all these on my calendar. So you make that change on the draft? <clears throat> I will. Thank you. I, that's an important meeting, so I want to be here. Absolutely. <laughs> And then I, the, your last item here was just a, the uh, discussion of the definition. I think that was something that you guys asked, Charlene, track down the information from the DOR. Mm -hmm. If there's questions, happy to try to. Just if I, there is no definition for capital planning. Um, the closest thing is capital improvement program, which speaks to the blueprint for planning. Mm -hmm. so that's why I gave you that definition.
And that, I don't know if um, I think the last thing you have on there is kind of the um, what was approved this past year. You know, if there are specific questions in, in terms of uh, items, uh, generally after town meeting, I have a, a meeting with department heads and a schedule department heads to follow up on different projects. Um, so we, we did have a little bit of an update provided to CPC for the status of some of these projects. But, you know, I think most of these I could probably do off the top of my head uh, if you do have. Uh, the only one that I, I generally leave a lot of the uh, facility maintenance to Sean, that tends to be a lot of tedious stuff, so I don't know, I don't have a good handle on that. But the library project is coming along. Judah Eldridge is coming along. I mean, a lot of the things that got voted are well in process. Boy, as I, I, I drive by it all the time, of course, and, and when you see them working on this library, now you know why it's so damn expensive. Yeah. My and a lot of manual labor yeah, to I take can see that it. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a question. Bruce? Are, Chris, are you administration? Is that your? Yes, that's mine. Last night when I was at the meeting, mm -hmm. And I came out the back door. It is so dark in that back parking lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, we it, actually uh, it's a safety problem. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we really need lights out there so badly. Well, we have those, um, and I thought that we have those little, uh, I don't know what they call them, the lights that are only, uh, you know, waist level. Yeah. And I thought that we were going to have, like, some solar things put on it so there would be some light and that Sean Libby was going to do it. I, I will get a hold of Sean and, and, and I find out. I asked Sean about this, and um, he was aware that they were not working. I asked what the issue was. He said that they're broken. Uh, they could not be fixed. They would be replaced with uh, LEDs, which have a, a much well, longer lifetime. Uh, but that was, you know, to your point, that was about a little I mean, we really bit. need to do something about yep. the lighting in that back pocket light. I mean, it, it's a problem. And one of the bulbs was out on the, uh, I park over this side, and one, yeah. of the, one of the lamps was just dead. So, I mean, we need to get Something the change the out. Yeah, the building is okay, but the far end. Yeah. Yeah. Especially on a rainy night like this. Yeah, and getting into the other roads, finding the road. I, yeah. I mean, I just, <laughs> I mean, if we need to put a line item in here for lighting in the back pocket light, I mean, I just think we need to do this. Yeah, no, I hear you. Uh, it is in a historic district, so we'll need to get food. Maybe. No. <laughs> we will. Seven years from now, <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll use historically appropriate lines. That'd be a good example of fucking the seven years thing. We'll be long gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can't put them in because we haven't met the seven year right. timeline yeah. yet. <laughs> Anything else on the uh, carryover? <laughs> Questions or comments? That's old business. All right, item number four, discussions, meeting dates in November do we, due to election dates and holidays. Charlene and Chris have given us a monthly calendar there. I did provide this for you. Um, just for the very reason of trying to figure out if we do need to um, have any additional meetings. Yep. Um, if, the, if the committee feels that it needs another meeting in November, um, keep in mind that the 12th is the actual observation of Veterans Day for the purposes of closures. So we'll be closed on Monday, the 12th of November, meaning, this, meaning that the selectmen will be meeting on the 13th of November, which is a Tuesday. The following Tuesday is the week of our Thanksgiving, and I know in the past you guys have not wanted to do that. Right. So the next date, if you're sticking to the Tuesday schedule, would be the 27th. You know, we should provide to them is the budget calendar too. I, I think it's by December that all the committee well, requests that, have to be done. Yeah, that's the, that's the triangle is <coughs> the key dates related to the budget. Oh, timeline. okay, you have it in there. Um, so what are we going to do on the 27th, please? If you need to yeah, meet for some actually reason. Actually, we need data if we need it. Why don't we do that? So okay. let's put it down in pencil. Yeah. 27th. And we'll cancel if need of, be. Uh, November. It's a Tuesday. November 27th. November yeah. 27th. We also have taken care of uh, November 1st. You might, right? Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. going to change that. So we have November know, 1st and November 27th. Yeah. So two, two dates in November. Yeah. 
I do think from the submissions, it does seem to be a little bit of a lighter year. Good. So I, it may be good. So I think that we won't see 25 million at the bottom. <laughs> I think that's a guarantee. It will be a significantly lesser number. What do we have in CPC money this year? Well, they haven't voted. No, oh, they're very cute about it. I, the CPC guy on my planning board, he won't tell me if my coat's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that. Yeah, I remember being <coughs> um, Actually, I, you know, I haven't looked at that yet. I think last year it was about one point four million. That's right. what they have to spend, and then they obviously have the buckets, the, the three buckets they have to have it in. So about one hundred and thirty, one hundred and forty thousand in each of the buckets. You did, you did say to me that they have a a lot of, a lot in front of them in terms of requests, <laughs> as usual. Yeah. You know. Actually, they haven't CPC. Yeah. Uh, it's a light. It's a light yet, year. At least from the town. It's interesting because I think last year we wound up administration coordinating with different departments. We probably submitted about eight to ten. Oh, more than that. More than that. More than, I think right now it's one. And when I asked this year, <coughs> excuse me, two or three no. in the pipeline. That's it. Yeah. So at least from from the organizationally, we're we're looking at going from ten down to two or three. It, next year would be the last year on the land bank debt? No. Is that correct? Uh, the 21st? 2024. 2024. Actually, 24. you know what? She put it on here. It, it is actually in here. I thought 24. I think it is 24. I read it a few minutes ago. Because that's, that's like 800, isn't it? The CPC also ends, don't we need to re up that? Or I think it keeps going on. Yeah, paid in full 2024 on the first page, Community Preservation Act. We pay the land bank Six portion. 2024. 24? Yeah. I probably won't be retiring until 2032, <laughs> so you'll have me around. God willing, that you want, you. God willing you want me. <laughs> Just a, a question, Robert, very sticky. Uh, you mentioned the, the amount of free cash we had yes. being close to last year's. Yes. Didn't we have an issue last year that, that got it way up? I, I, I just think that's a very high number. I, I'm not complaining about it, but it, was there anything in particular that got us there or just the normal stuff? I think that um, that's a great question. I, I think that some of it has been normal. Uh, we have seen a, a fair amount of uh, uptick in terms of the uh, revenue from the uh, uh, operation of solid waste. So uh, Lincoln, uh, you know, a lot of people are getting out of that business, other towns, other entities. So we, we see a, a fair amount coming from C, C and D. The other thing, even though we kind of heavily criticize uh, going after people for not paying their taxes, look at 98.5% of the people pay their taxes in this town. We're talking about 1.5% that, that don't. Uh, by going after that, I think that generated almost half a million dollars by itself. Okay, so there are a few of those, and, and that's a pool of money that <coughs> eventually will whittle that down. But there's, there's a few things. Uh, the Judah Eldridge, uh, I was hoping to get that in uh, because that would be CPC paying the back taxes on that. Uh, that was almost 10% of the uh, back amount due, uh, and we don't have that quite ready yet. Uh, so that would probably be this fiscal year. So going after people that owe taxes has been, quite honestly, is something we should be doing, and, and we're doing a little bit more. I think what happened is scared some people into paying. They, they didn't even get a letter that <laughs> people paid. Well, you know, if 98.5% of the people pay their bills, you know, I don't think we're asking too much. No. Certainly the circumstances sometimes, although actually I just had a meeting today, one would think it would be more people unable to pay it's more <laughs> cases of people unwilling to pay. So they inherit a property, yep. they have it, and they don't want to pay up uh, until the family works out the issues or whatever. Yep. Tends to be more the norm than, than people that are unable yep. to pay. Interesting. Are we done? All right, we've completed item Roman numeral five on meeting dates with changes. Any uh, last minute items for your concerns? Questions for Chris? Can we get the AC turned off in here? <laughs> <laughs>
Apparently not. I've asked that numerous times. <laughs> That's the right <laughs> idea. Wear sweaters. It's still freezing. Even in the summertime, this room is like The chairs are better, though. Much yeah, better. Nice. Nice. That. Very nice. I You're very welcome. Thank you very much. And I would underscore what Bruce's comment about the uh, lighting. I think that is very, very important, especially as the nights are getting, getting to be earlier. Winter time and it, what, November, they changed the clocks back. So <coughs> really, we need to get it squared away. Thank you. I'd like Bruce. to make a motion that we adjourn. <laughs> motion on the floor. Second. Second. Thank you, Joe. Thank you all. Thank you. Aye. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Shelley. Thank Good to you. see you. Okay. Charlie, you're supposed to. I'll, I'll touch you in a minute. Over yeah. here. I think no, no, you know, could push the red one, Angela. No, Jay's. Um, yes, I saw that. I was at the finger. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The one right next to it. You know, to the, the left. was packed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. sorry. See, we lose this clip. I'm not hitting the lead. We lose the lead. I know.